we shall refer to a real-life problem on page 12. Please read the question by yourself. Let x1, x2, and x3 be the number of items of paper of type A, type B, and type C, respectively. We wish to minimize the production cost, which has the function z equals to 5x1 plus 6x2 plus 8x3. Since the school needs to have at least 250 meters square of paper, the factory needs to complete the production within 150 hours. Thus, we have the following constraints and all the variables are non-negative. We first convert the problem from a minimization problem to a maximization problem. So we would regard it as we are now maximizing z equals to negative 5x1 minus 6x2 minus xx3 instead. Next, all the right-hand side constants of the constraints are non-negative and all variables are non-negative. But we need to give surplus variable, artificial variable, and slack variables to the constraints to transform them into equations. And then we also need to subtract a huge positive constant of a1 to the maximization objective function at the right hand side. The system now is transformed to the following standard form. Please refer to the steps of the simplex method by yourself. We finally proceed to this system having no more negative coefficients for those variables in row 0. If we take x1 to be 50, x2 to be 0, x3 to be 25, e1, a1, and s2 to be 0, and z to be negative 450, this solution is optimal. In this case, z is negative 450, and it is the maximum value. And this means that z equals to negative 5x1 minus 6x2 minus xx3 minus m times a1 is equal to negative 450, and this is a maximum value. This corresponds to the conclusion that z equals to 5x1 plus 6x2 plus xx3 is having a minimum value of 450. This is achieved when taking x1 equals to 50, x2 equals to 0, and x3 equals to 25. Therefore, the production cost is minimum with a value of 450 when 50 items of type 1, 0 item of type B, and 25 items of type C paper is produced. We can see that in this final solution, we have A1 equals to 0, and this is reasonable. Now, we observe that we are having E1 equals to 0. This means that when we achieve this minimum production cost, we produce exactly the amount of paper just enough to meet the target from the school, and we didn't produce any extra amount of paper. Observe that the slack variable is zero. It means that when we achieve this minimum production cost, we just manage to produce the paper in exactly 150 hours and we didn't finish this production earlier. There is no unused time remained. Finally, please notice that there will be situations when the simplex method fails to give solutions. This happens when either the linear programming problem has no solution as the constraints are inconsistent, or the feasible set is unbounded. Let us first refer to the example on page 18. If we use graphical method to tackle this problem, we will see that the feasible set is empty 
because there is inconsistency among the constraints. If we solve the problem using the simplest method, we will go through these deductions. And then we will reach the final system here. There is no more negative coefficients for those variables at row 0. We shall take x1 equals to 0, x2 equals to 5, x1 e2 equals to 0, a2 equals to 15, and z equals to this value. This solution is optimal, but we observe that we are taking the artificial variable a2 to be 15 instead of 0. This is an indication that there is no feasible solution to this problem. As you can see that, having x1 equals to 0 and x2 equals to 5, it is not enough to have x1 plus x2 to be greater than or equal to 20. It is because a2 equals to 15 make a contribution to the second constraints at the left hand side so that it fulfills the second constraints but this contribution doesn't come from just x1 plus x2. Therefore, it indicates that there is no feasible solutions to the original problem. Let's proceed to the example on page 21. If we use the graphical method to tackle this problem, we will see that the feasible set is unbounded. If we solve the problem using the simplest method, we will come up to the phenomenon that there is no positive ratios for the right-hand side constant and the coefficients at the constraints rows of the key column for us to compare. It means that there is no limitation on the growth of the variables represented by the key column, that is x2 in our case. Therefore, we cannot identify a key row and the simplest method breaks down. The linear programming problem has no maximum. We can see that in our case, for the first row, the coefficient of x2 is 0. It means that x2 doesn't appear in this constraint. This means that constraint 1 doesn't impose any restriction to the value of x2. In the second row, the coefficient of x2 is negative. If we refer to the second inequality, we can see that since x2 is not negative, we can increase x2 to whatever value we like and constraint 2 will still be valid. Therefore, constraint 2 also doesn't impose any restriction to the value of x2.